and Muslims are being stigmatized because of what is happening there. And, uh, and I agree with you and, and all of you about uh, educating the community, and this is what we're doing right now too. So it's letting them know that the, 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 this is just small groups doing that, that big damage to a name. And, uh, and as well as you said, it's not only to the Muslims. Colombians suffer a little bit, uh, a lot because of the drug dealers, uh, there have been the Italians with the mafia, and there's too many things that over the, the, the history. Oftentimes people think that um, it's the Muslims who are the number one perpetrators of terrorist attacks against the Western world, but that's actually inaccurate and the media overemphasizes that. But if we were to take a look at the statistics, Muslims are not the number one group of people who are responsible for terrorist attacks. And in fact, Iraq is the number one country in the world who gets the most terrorist attacks out of all countries, all their countries, from ISIS. So we have, you know, terrorist attacks from so-called Muslims on Muslims. They're killing Muslims. The theme is very, really heavy. We, should, we can talk about mm -hmm. this for years. But what is what should the community do or uh, understand about the hijab, about what the women or the Muslims, all of them, are suffering because of what these groups are doing? So I think it's important to just understand that um, the hijab for many women is just one part of their identity. Um, we're a whole other person beyond just what we cover um, our hair with. So uh, many of us have uh, professions that we're very proud of that we work in, whether we're doctors, lawyers, uh, business professionals, teachers. Um, we have that aspect of our identity. Many of us associate ourselves with, with the roles that we play within our families and our communities um, as mothers, daughters, sisters, um, community activists, uh, you know, role models, leaders, that type of thing. And so I think if there was a message that I could give out is that um, the hijab is just one aspect of who we are. We choose to cover ourselves much in the same way that you choose to wear a dress shirt or whether you choose to wear ripped jeans. It's just another form of who you are and, and, and identifying yourself. It is also a very important part of our religion. It is um, one part of our, our, our faith. Um, whether you choose to wear it or not is a kind of a personal um, part of your personal journey, but it's still, like I said, just one facet of so many other things. Baba, can you tell us the, your experience? Um, <clears throat> Uh, so uh, I grew up in a very small community of less than 16,000 people, so um, it was a not very diverse community. Um, there were no other Muslims wearing the hijab. Um, so it was a very, um, I guess, brave decision on me when I came to grade 10 in uh, Swift Current, Saskatchewan to be able to put it on, and it was something that I did um, out of the blue. I was not planning on wearing it, and then the day before school, I was like, hey, I'm going to go wear it. Um, and so um, it was quite it was quite different at first. Um, I got a little bit of stares, um, you know. But you know what? It was actually something that I thought really helped with my self confidence. It really helped with um, m giving me an identity and really growing of who I am today. Um, and like you know, we said it's not just a modesty thing. It's very um, multifaceted. But really, it helped me with being a person, like who I am as a person. So. How was the process, the process. Of, of putting the hijab on, wearing that, what, how was the reaction that you got at that moment? Okay, um, <clears throat> so I put it on around 2006 and um, at the time I actually uh, got a few weird stares. I even had someone throw apple cores from the bus. Um, think, uh, thankfully he had bad aim, so I never really actually got hit. <laughs> but um, I, I did get a few things. I got people whispering behind me, so it was kind of a bit of a struggle for me. Um, and I know there's other people who have no struggles. Um, it was very easy, but because I was in such a small city, um, I did contemplate taking it off because, you know, maybe it wasn't right for me. But I ended up uh, sticking with it. I had a couple friends who weren't wearing the hijab with me. They'd walk home with me. Um, and as I started to make friends, really, I, I integrated really well. Um, like I said, it was a very um, quick decision. I had not planned on wearing it at the age of 15. But, you know, it, when you feel like you're ready, you're ready. So. Um, you know, it's different for everyone, but that was the process for me. It was very quick, very easy, and I'm very glad I did it. Okay, that's the story of Marwa, your experience. Thank you, Marwa. We're going to go for a small break, and we come back, we continue in the Muslim view.
going on inside of a Muslim uh, family. So Imam, as a father, how that is being a father of a girl who is growing, a Muslim girl? How Islam look at the family. Family in Islam is very important elements, and, and if you see that uh, through the books of scholars and, and those who were driven from the verses of the Quran and the teaching of our Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, we can see the family that uh, really take uh, wage, uh, way um, uh, pages uh, explaining uh, how the family structures has to be uh, performed and how the family has to be uh, to be active and also to uh, to build uh, the uh, strong family and, and and therefore you will see that talking about family laws and and, and family structures in in the books of, of Muslim scholars it's it's uh, take uh, more than than even talk about prayers and and and, and other and other worship of uh, act of worships. Uh, so uh, it's it's the beginning. It starts from the beginning when the marriage uh, take place. It took place when the marriage uh, took place. That the husband and the wife has to choose. Uh, uh, themselves on on, on, on on some basis that uh, the husband has to be religiously, religiously uh, devoted and and also he should choose he should choose a woman that's religiously also devoted that the message can go smoothly uh, to the kids uh, and they don't need to tell them uh, to pray they don't need to tell them to fast they don't need to tell them to wear hijab that in in my case as a father I did not have the, the I did not do that. So, because my wife uh, was uh, was deeply religious uh, family, she was belonged to a religious family, and also from our sides. So when we when we take care about our kids, uh, we pray in the house and we fast, and and we practice the uh, simple Islamic practices that everyone's doing, uh, and we did not have the uh, we we did not tell them is to wear the hijab. When she, re when she reached, my daughter, uh, especially Rehab now, when she reached the age of puberty, uh, she came to me and she said, Dad, uh, I'm going to wear the hijab. This is, was uh, smoothly and uh, it's not forced. Uh, because in the end of the day, uh, as Sister Sarah said in the beginning, if you force someone to do something, this will be against uh, the sincerity that you're not doing it for God, you're doing it for your dad. And if you're doing it for your dad, or if you're doing it for your mom, it's not going to be accepted, because God only accepts whatever you do, you do for him. You don't do it for others. If I'm praying only to be seen that I'm praying, uh, or if I'm paying zakat only to be seen I'm a generous, or if I'm l learning Islam only to be called as a scholar, then this is actually, this will be against me in the day of resurrection. So it won't, it won't help me. So when it's going to help me by, by educating our kids, what you're doing, you're doing for the sake of God, and you have to practice what God telling us exactly in his book. And if, if we do that, then we'll be safe in the day of accountability. Okay, so now we can say that basically uh, nobody's force they, is something that is, it, it came, comes to them. So then they, they, they take the, the decision, the girls, they take the decision to wear the hijab without being forced, without being obligated to wear it. And can we say that it's a normal way to do it? It's normally in all the Muslims, uh, the, 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 the Muslim families, that's the way it works? So I think um, there's, you know, growing up in, in Canada, it was very important for me to um, express myself in terms of my culture and my religion and to separate it. So my religion is um, Islam and I follow certain practices within that. And then my culture is being um, an Arab Canadian. Um, I grew up in a household where my parents were immigrants um, and so they have a lot of Arabic traditions. Uh, we see that um, sometimes the hijab is uh, an element of both religion and culture for some people. Uh, the, re the religion of Islam believes that things should be done based on the person's decision in their own sincerity. And that's how it is with the hijab. So as we talk about on this panel, we talk about how it's a choice that a woman should make for herself. We do see that sometimes there's cultural practices where um, they believe that the family comes to that decision for you or that because you're part of a certain community that you must uh, abide by certain uh, things, whether that be the hijab or whether it be other things, um, you know, certain marriage practices, that type of thing. 
Um, so if we kind of make that divide, we can then say that religiously, it's entirely, it should entirely be a choice that the woman makes. However, culturally, um, sometimes there's other noise in that, that, that some families or that some people practice in terms of their understanding of the hijab and how it should be enforced. So you see these, um, you know, very stereotypical stories that we hear of the fact that, you know, it was probably her father or her brothers who forced her to wear the hijab. Um, honestly, when I, when I was trying to think of if I can think of anybody who has fallen under that, out of all of my groups of friends, and I do have many, many uh, Muslim friends who are from very different cultures, I actually don't know a single one who has been forced to wear it. And uh, the important thing is, is uh, uh, we, I'm going to try to, to, to make kind of compressing what we've been talking. So it's a choice. It's an individual choice which is not forced by the families. Uh, so I think we're going to go, we're going to do a, go to a break right now. We're going to go to a small break. And when we come back, we're going to continue with this. Is, this is going to take a few days, I think, in order to finish this panel and uh, to get into a deep conclusions, but roughly we are talking what is being a Muslim woman and wearing a hijab. Now we're gonna go and talk, uh, after this break, we're gonna talk about what happened in our society where the problem is a big, big problem. So we'll be back in one moment. <laughs> Okay, we have here Rehab Taleb. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome, hi. Okay, Rehab. Um, uh, we are very young. We're, we're not going to say how old are you, but uh, we know you are in high school. How is being growing as Muslim and wearing a hijab in, uh, in, in the school environment? Uh, sometimes you feel like you don't belong um, and you just feel like people look at you differently all the time and if you don't dress in a certain way you feel like people won't accept you in the school um, and I have a lot of friends who tend to always be uh, very closed up because they don't want to open and they don't want to be like uh, very outgoing and so I don't like that because then people think you're very like you know depressed and everything right so I always try to be an outgoing person always happy to show people that Whatever they see on TV, all that violence is not true. Um, and luckily, I do have a lot of friends, and everyone in school is very nice to me. Yeah. Okay, when you started wearing the hijab? When I was 11 years old. Okay, so not very long ago. Well, no. Okay. But anyway, uh, you started wearing the hijab when you were 11. And uh, over that time, from the moment you start wearing the hijab till today, have you had any problems? Not necessarily, but I do remember um, as I take the bus to school, uh, the uh, city bus, I was, st uh, I was standing and there was a person on a wheelchair who needed space. And so I was moving backwards and this lady comes up to me, she's, she's, uh, very, like, she's an old lady, comes up to me and says, there's no space for the guy, you need to move. So, and like there was plenty of space and so she was kind of yelling at me and shouting like, why are you here? Like just kind of move back and like where am I supposed to go? And everyone was just like staring at me at that point and no one did anything. So it, it kind of ruined my whole day and to see that someone like that was, was treating me bad. I just didn't understand why. Like I didn't do anything bad to you, right? So I kind of, I'm, I've grown to understand and to take in that I will be treated differently and people will discriminate me sometimes because I'm different and you really why are you different because I wear the hijab obviously uh, but do you, th you, th you think you are different I personally don't think I'm different it's pe there's this image that people see me in as I'm as a different person and w that image that you you feel people are looking at you is because of what not only for the hijab but or, or for what uh, it's probably because what they see on TV and they see that the, all the violence that, that they're viewing and they're watching and as I wear the hijab it's it's a symbol that I'm a Muslim right so they take it in that I might be violent and that's not something that they believe in like they don't like violent things right at, so, at school you have uh, friends more it is more Muslim friends 
I have Muslim. Wearing hijab? Yeah, I do. And I have Muslim and non-Muslim friends. But you also see the struggle that my friends are taking. Like, I just recently had a friend who took the hijab off because she felt like she didn't belong. And she's like, you know, my dad's against it anyway, and I'm just going to take it off because I don't feel comfortable. So some of my friends definitely do struggle. And we can, we can say that there's, other than discrimination, there's bullying because of that going on at school? Um, and at the school I go to, there isn't necessarily any bullying. People are very accepting. But I do hear in other schools that there is bullying because they just either don't want to be your friend or uh, they don't like you, they make fun of you, you know. I guess, how yeah. how you deal with that when when you're talking with your friend with your Muslim friends mm -hmm. women girls yeah. with the, wearing hijab how what what the comments what were your comments uh, about this like about the violence like the bullying yeah, about, yeah. um I I usually tell them to either shrug it off or always talk with respect right because if the moment you start turning and maybe you swear because you're mad or anything they're gonna be like that's gonna prove something to the bully they're gonna see that oh yeah see they are like that they are violent they are rude right so I always tell them speak with respect and always like st like stay true to yourself right yeah. but when when you're talking with them when just uh, you all coffee yeah. and you start talking what what are the comments that are coming up from my friends yeah from everyone yes um they feel hated and they feel like they just shouldn't you know they shouldn't be there kind of and they so, sometimes my friends are like you know sometimes I feel like I should take the hijab off you know my hair is nice and everything like I don't want people to think I'm ugly and everything so yeah okay Rehab thank you very much uh, this is how a perception of a girl from high school uh, uh, have of what they're suffering what they're living out of wearing a hijab and uh, but especially the response from the society for these girls because they choose to wear a hijab. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back in one moment. Imam, what do you think about the reaction of the community? Because the community is being divided in the we know there's a, a Islamophobia going on and uh, there's people who are just pro-Islam so what do you think about it? I would really have two suggestions one to our community and one to the outside community to our community is to engage more in all civil in civil uh, aspects um, to help in different areas and to succeed in all the fields, because we do have doctors, we do have engineers, we do have lawyers who are well equipped, who are well knowledgeable, and, and Muslims also have now the mayor of London, England, he is a Muslim, so we can also interact in a society positively, is to, to really let the others see what is the true Islam is, and not to take it from the media only. Uh, to the other, to the outside community, I would really also suggest that um, uh, that this discrimination and, and racism it uh, exists and it exists in, in many societies. So we believe the Canadians are uh, and uh, that uh, the, our society, Canada, this mosaic, this beautiful country, uh, it's based on this understanding. So the awareness among the Canadians through their uh, through their agencies that need to be need to be uplifted. Uh, and we should not allow racism and discrimination against any groups to exist because if it exists then then this is really it's, it's damaging to our image in, in, in the world. Canada has wonderful image in the world because of eliminating discrimination and, and racism. We do have it but the level of it is uh, it, it decreased uh, in, the, in years before but now it seems it's increasing uh, against Muslims. So we need to really stop that and we need to educate to our society this is unacceptable and this is what Islam uh, came to tell us. There is no difference between white and black and no difference between uh, yellow and red and uh, no difference between Arabs and non-Arabs except to piety. So people should not be judged according to their colors, according to their religion, according to their ethnic backgrounds, according to, um, uh, 
to the gender even, so they should be really, people have to be uh, responsible for their actions in terms of if they, if they really against the law of the country. So then we have to work together to eliminate, eliminate the racism and discrimination on all levels. The only issue maybe that I had is that because I actually took that decision before coming to Canada. So when I came to Canada here, um, I didn't second guess myself. Like I, I didn't want to take it off, but it was a little bit hard of all the questions of people asking me, why are you wearing it when you're so young? Um, uh, and then all the other beautiful questions that people ask. <laughs> Like, I had legit people ask me, do you actually have hair? Like, do you, are you wearing this because you're bald? And um, it's, of course, it's not because of that. It's because I love the hijab and I, it's just, it's, it's something in my nature. Do you think it's fair for women to be treated uh, like that, as you mentioned, just because he's wearing a hijab? I don't, of course, nobody is, it's not fair for, an, for anybody to treat anybody differently because of the way they look or the way they, or the way they choose to wear whatever they're wearing. Um, I think everybody should be um, treated equally. Uh, I definitely uh, don't treat any, any, anyone else who's not wearing the hijab differently because just because they're not wearing a hijab. Why do you think people are treating, that is happening, what? I think it's because of Islamophobia, basically, and I think people are afraid of what they don't know. So I think if we educate people on why we're wearing, um, why we're actually wearing the hijab and why we're actually dressed this way and what Islam is all about, they would maybe get to an understanding where they're not afraid of it. But I think it's 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 our role to educate people and let them know that well, why we wear it and that that's why we did the panel today which was very good um, uh, I, I really enjoyed the talk of uh, all the all the panel members they were amazing um, uh, and uh, I think we should do more shows like that and go around in the community and integrate more in the community so that they would understand and if they have any questions they just they, they should just come and ask us right